Uh, well, uh, everyone, thank you for joining the virtual career series today. Uh, so uh, hopefully many of you, uh, this is ho hopefully uh, your you know third, fourth, or maybe, gosh, what, I think sixth or seventh we're on now. Um, but for some of you, if it's your first time joining us, we're very happy to have you here. Uh, please feel free to come off camera if you feel comfortable. Uh, we'll be going through today. Uh, I will introduce Cynthia Tucker, our speaker. Uh, she's going to be uh, giving us all a lesson in event management. And um, then we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. But other than that, it's uh, pretty straightforward. We try and wrap up between 6.45 and 7. So please stay with us as long as you'd like. So with, that, uh, with that, I will uh, actually present just a couple slides here. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see this. And well, that, uh, okay, yeah, that really blew up on my screen even. Uh, but a little bit about the uh, monthly virtual career series. If you haven't joined us before, uh, we are running this uh, career series monthly. Uh, we started, uh, gosh, back in October of last year uh, in the midst of the pandemic. This seemed like a great way to continue connecting with students. So uh, we've been doing it every month. It's the second Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, so if you're able to join us for future months, uh, we'll, we'll continue to uh, be running these, hopefully run them through summer and obviously into next year is, is the uh, ultimate goal. And uh, obviously keep an eye out for Eventbrite links. We will be sending those through the uh, Com Department email list. So hopefully many of you are receiving those uh, in your inbox each month. And again, this month, uh, Cynthia Tucker, she's the Assistant Director of Trojan Event Services at USC. So probably a school many of us are all familiar with. And obviously they do a lot of events, I, I have to imagine. I mean, that, certainly a lot that are uh, publicly aired on TV at least. Right? Uh, so bu busy school, big school. Uh, but quick look ahead as well. Uh, obviously we've had some speakers here January, February, March. We're in April now, but uh, coming up in May, we have Debbie Fitzgerald uh, to talk about her career in public relations. And then in June on the 23rd, um, we actually moved back May and June, I think, to avoid some, some conflicts with uh, obviously uh, finals and graduation and uh, just other things that are probably keeping you busy. But uh, late June, uh, we have Noelle White joining us to talk about her career in marketing and brand management. So some things on the road ahead. Hope you'll join us for those two sessions. And with that, I will stop sharing. If I make... And just uh, move on to introducing Cynthia. So Cynthia, I don't know if you want to wave, just so everyone uh, can, can see on camera there. Uh, but Cynthia, a uh, little bit of background. I'm sure she'll give you plenty more, but she joined USC in 2015. And she's uh, responsible for overseeing the business operations of Trojan Event Services. Uh, she supervises a, a team of eight full-time staff, covers four indoor event venues, 19 outdoor locations, 12 shared spaces with the USC Athletics Department and has a, a cohort of 200 student workers. So uh, a small army. <laughs> and, uh, and to top it off uh, with her 25 years of experience in event management, she is also a uh, professor at USC. So uh, quite a range of, uh, of different areas that she covers, but uh, you know, obviously very happy to have you here with us, Cynthia, and you know, have you speaking. So with, with that, before I hand it over to you, I just want to kick it off with a quick poll uh, for those of you that uh, can use the React, or actually we use the chat. Um, if you can use the chat, uh, if you have an interest in career management, or <laughs> and if you are interested in a career in event management, sorry, say that again. If you are interested in a career in event management, can you please just respond with a uh, yes or, you know, in, in the chat? And if that's something they are interested in. Okay, again, good, good slew, maybe about a, a dozen or so. Um, great, great. So definitely a, a lot of folks here that do have an interest in event management. Great to, great to hear that You're, you've come to the right place. Um, as we continue through the session, if you do have questions that come up, please feel free to put them in the chat. We can uh, uh, break up the conversation and, and uh, ask a few questions along the way, or we'll save some of those for the end as well for the Q&A session. But, uh, please feel free to share those in the chat. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Cynthia, and then let you kick it off. 
All right, thank you so much, Justin. Hi, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Um, I see faces, I see names, um, but I'm so glad that you were able to join me. Uh, my name is Cynthia Tucker. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am the Assistant Director of Trojan Event Services at the University of Southern California, as Justin mentioned, and I'm also an adjunct professor in the Thornton School of Music teaching venue management. But let me tell you a little bit about my background. So I am a very proud, proud gaucho. I may work at USC, but I remind all of those Trojans, I will always be a gaucho. Um, so I was also a communications major. I went in actually wanting to study accounting, surprisingly. I went in as an accounting major and within my first quarter, I was not doing very well. And I think it was an advanced calculus class. And my mother said, well, you like talking, you like writing, you like speaking, look into the communications degree. I looked into the communications degree and I didn't look back. So in addition to that degree, I also completed my black studies degree at UC Santa Barbara as well. Um, but while I was a student at UCSB, um, knowing that I probably wasn't gonna become an accountant, I always had a passion for public relations. Um, my aunt at that time was a publicist at Universal Pictures and I had always been impressed by all of the celebrities that she worked with here in Los Angeles, here in Hollywood. Of course, you're gonna see celebrities all the time, but I was impressed with the coordination of the press junkets and the red carpet premieres um, and all of the things that were around uh, supporting a, a film coming out. And so I said, with my communications degree, I wanna study public relations. At the time, I'm class of 1994, so it's been a while, but at that time, there was no emphasis in public relations. So in order for me to really expand my horizon and find out if this is really what I wanted to do, I went right to the Career Center and I was able to find an internship. Um, so I interned with someone in the Santa Barbara area, it was a small boutique public relations company. And it was at that time I realized I really don't like public relations as much as I thought I would. So that's what an internship is all about. Use this time to determine what you don't want to do, as well as what you do like to do. And it's okay to just do an internship for a quarter or two and then back out because that's, that's the time that you really want to determine if this is really for me. But how I really started honing down on my event planning, I always thought event planning was going to be a hobby of mine. My mother reminds me when I was a Girl Scout all the way back when I was a Girl Scout, that I was always that Girl Scout that enjoyed coordinating the cookie drives, the camping trips, anything that needed to be organized. I was always the one that enjoyed doing it. Fast forward to my senior year in high school, I was what was called the Commissioner of Fine Arts. And that simply translates to the person that coordinated the events for the, unit, for the, for the high school. So I coordinated our prom and our homecoming any fundraising events that we did, our pep rallies, I coordinated all of those. And again, it was just something I enjoyed doing, but I wanted to become an accountant. And if I wasn't gonna be an accountant, I wanted to be a publicist. And then um, once I got to UC Santa Barbara, the organizations that I became a part of, I was always that person that said, oh, I'll coordinate the event. So I became um, a woman of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority uh, Incorporated at UC Santa Barbara. And we were needing someone to coordinate the events that, that we were doing. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll do that. I was also part of our college chapter in NAACP. And once again, we had a big fundraising event. I said, I'll do it. And I loved it. I and just honestly loved doing it. So when I graduated from UCSB, um, I decided to become a publicist and I always thought the event planning was just gonna be something I enjoyed doing on the side. I didn't anticipate it to be a money maker, just something I enjoyed doing. So I interviewed with the Walt Disney Company and I got my position there as a public relations assistant in their international home video department. But it was in my interview that I actually expressed to my boss, I really enjoy event planning. So I had my event experience also on my resume in addition to my public relations experience. And I was able to speak on the joy that I have and I just really enjoyed it. So if you came across any projects that were uh, special event focused, don't mind giving those projects to me, I'd love to take them on. And so 
he hired me. I worked with him for several years and he started actually giving me more and more projects in addition to me being his assistant. And then DreamWorks Pictures opened up. They were a brand new company. I wanted to try my, my feet in, in that company. So I went and moved on to DreamWorks. And I also was interviewing for a public relations position. And in that interview, I did the same thing. I really enjoy event planning. And if you have any projects, please give them, my, give them to me. Because at this point, I've realized if you know anything about public relations, a good event can generate publicity and publicity can help support an event. So that's how the two came together in my world. And that's how I was able to do both. And then I realized the event planning was kind of starting to outweigh the public relations, but I still enjoyed doing PR. So when I was at DreamWorks, um, three months into my position, my boss came to me and said, I'm leaving the company, but I want to make sure that you are in a position where you're going to thrive. And she said, there's a position that's open within the special events department. Would you be interested? And I said, absolutely, I would love it. This was the department that did all of the red carpet premieres and the press junkets, all the things that I admired my aunt doing as a child. I now had the opportunity to do those. I said, where do I sign up? Where's, where's the application? Where do I submit my resume? She said, well, the executives are, are having a retreat in a couple of weeks in Santa Barbara would you be available? I said, Santa Barbara, of course, that's my old stomping grounds. I would love to go back to Santa Barbara. And these were all of the top execs. If you know anything about DreamWorks, the S, the K, and the G. So that included Steven Spielberg, Jeffrey Katzenberg, David Geffen, and all of the other top executives, about 12 of them, they were having their senior executive retreat. So I was brought there to just run errands, make sure the coffee was set up, make sure the pastries were there. If anyone needed a, um, a something faxed, I was kind of a little bit of that gopher person. And on Monday morning, I went back to my boss and said, Santa Barbara, loved it, didn't get to go outside and enjoy the city. But I said, I really enjoyed working in with, with that team. I would love to interview for the position. And she said, well, you actually did. You interviewed this weekend. So you never know when someone may be watching you. <laughs> do something well and you do it with passion people are going to see it. I had no idea that I was being watched that closely. And so I then went to, to his office and I sat down and I, again, I could never imagine that I was being interviewed that weekend. And I said, well, are there any follow-up questions that you have for me? And he said, absolutely not. What you do comes naturally. I had to tell you once, you took initiative to do other things that I didn't have to ask you to do. I would love for you to join my team. So that included a promotion as well as a pay increase. And so I was on cloud nine. I was doing what I thought was going to start out as a hobby and I was doing it as my career. And then the entrepreneur bug bit me. Um, while I was working at DreamWorks, I knew I always wanted to get an MBA. So I enrolled in the Pepperdine um, MBA program that was for those that were fully employed. So I went to DreamWorks from eight to five, and then I had evening classes and I did that for four years and I earned my MBA. But during that time, um, I knew that I started to have the desire to start my own company. I wanted to do my own, my own events. And my mother and my father worked for themselves. At that time, my aunt had retired from, from Universal Pictures. She started her own company. I had aunts and uncles that were entrepreneurs. So I knew eventually it was going to happen to me. So I decided to start my own company. I left DreamWorks and I started on Ladybug Productions, primarily as an event planning company. I still have the company to, to this day. Um, so it's been 21 years, but I primarily focus on weddings and doing day of wedding coordination. So I actually love being a wedding planner. Uh, a lot of people think that I'm crazy, but to be a part of someone's life during the, one of the most important times of their life is very, very rewarding. So fast forward to that, um, the recession hit in 2008 and everyone that was having events and weddings was no longer having events and weddings. So unfortunately I, I had to take a pause with my company and I ended up finding a full-time position for the city of Santa Monica. At that time, they were looking for a venue manager and I had no experience really doing venue management. I had always done event planning, 
But the woman that was interviewing me was also an event planner in her prior career. And as we talked about it, she said, you're just the type of person I want because an event planner knows what a venue needs. And I can teach you what our venues policies and procedures are. Would you be interested? I said, absolutely. Uh, The recession took my savings account down to almost zero. And if you're gonna start a business, please have an emergency savings account. I think COVID has taught us this, but the recession really taught me the importance to have a, a savings account. And so I started in venue management. And what helped me with that venue management interview, again, was something that I just volunteered to do. I was approached by a museum in Los Angeles County. It's called the African American Firefighter Museum. This was one of the two locations in LA County where African American firefighters were allowed to work because of segregation. And so this historical museum, which had only housed African-American men uh, until about the late 1960s, is now was was transferred into a functioning um, firehouse, closed, and now was a museum. They were not getting any funding from the city of Los Angeles. And so they approached me to ask, how can we use this museum in this space to host events? And I said, I don't have any experience doing venue management, but I, I... have some ideas of what I think you can do. Unbeknownst to me, I was able to use my MBA degree. I was able to use my public relations degree. I was able to use my event planning degree. And so I actually helped them for three years to get their space up and running to host events. And so that's how they were able to sustain themselves. But during my interview, that's what I talked about. I didn't get paid for to helping that museum for three years. Again, I did it out of passion. And uh, it cost wasn't wasn't a factor for me. And who doesn't like being around firefighters if you're a man or a woman? (laughs) Um, And then I was looking to kind of expand my my horizons in regards to venue management. And I looked into a position at USC. I interviewed for it. I got the position. Six years later, I'm still here at USC overseeing a number of indoor and outdoor spaces on campus that people host events and performances and recreational sports. Um, So I now oversee event spaces, but I have a team of people that work with me that can help people to put on their events in their spaces. And why I'm a professor. (laughs) Um, My mother was a school teacher and I always enjoyed teaching. Um, I didn't think it was going to be something that I would go into. And if you can see the thread in my story, a lot of things happened in my life that I never imagined that they would happen. But you just follow your faith and whatever guidance you have, it'll, tell, it'll take you right to where you're supposed to be. But um, with my mother being a school teacher, prior to that, I was working with a local adult school and I was teaching an event planning course and a wedding planning course. So I was teaching other people how to co- how coordinate events and weddings. And so I then decided with my master's degree, I qualified to be an adjunct professor and I started looking for adjunct professor opportunities. And little do I know that there was an opportunity right in my backyard at USC. I ended up meeting the gentleman that proposed this course through the Thornton School of Music. And he was looking for someone that he can co-instruct and eventually pass the course on to. And that's, that was me. So you ask, why the Thornton School of Music? Why not the School of Business? That was the same question I asked. And so his thinking was, if you wanted to go into music, if you wanted to be an artist, if you wanted to be an agent, you needed to also understand the venue side of the music industry. We go to big concerts and stadiums and arenas and performing arts venues. All of those spaces, an artist or an artist manager or promoter needs to also understand the venue side of what of your, of your needs. And also, of course, we wanna to try to pick some of our students to go into venue management. So I've been teaching the course for three years and every year I get at least one student who actually is interested in venue management. So if that's something that you're interested and you just wanna know a little bit more about, feel free to, to let me know and I'll give you my contact information. Um, so another one of the questions that I wanted to share information about myself is, what is my day to day? I'm working from home. I've been working from home for the last year. Um, when COVID hit, all of our venue spaces closed immediately. 
It happened on a Friday. I started refunding people on Monday um, with cancellation, cancellation of all of our events. And our events still have not returned. Um, with those of us in California, we haven't gotten the green light to open up our venue spaces. But I'm looking, I see that light at, this, at the end of the tunnel that I'll be able to return back to that. But with all the number of the venues that I oversee, I have a team that actually work day to day with making sure that the reservation of process is seamless. Um, if there are any policies and procedures that the university requires someone to do in our spaces, we don't say yes to everyone. Um, we can say yes primarily to student orgs and departments, but outside organizations, we do have some policies of what we do and, and unfortunately not, uh, we are not able to allow um, to be on our campus. Um, so with that, I'm making sure that our audio is working, our lighting is working. Um, if there's any house staff such as event ushers, um, I'm making sure that those persons are trained and I have a team um, that work directly with that. And I was actually an usher in Campbell Hall um, when I was a student at UC Santa Barbara. So little did I know that that little bit of usher experience is what I'm able to talk to to my students. So when my students come to me and they're, oh, I, you know, I'm standing for two and three hours watching performances. I said, I did the same thing at Campbell Hall, did the same thing, but during my experience, I was able to see some really awesome performances um, in, in Campbell Hall. So with my degree, again, I went from public relations, but I really followed my passion of event planning. So um, I, I thank all of you who have an interest in event planning. Um, the three things I think any person should, should have, a skill you should have if you want to go into event management, the first thing is you have to be detailed orientated. You need to be able to see something and project something right before the client sees it. You need to have a plan A, a B, a C, a D, a E, and an F. Um, and when I say that, um, we're here in Los Angeles, or if you're hosting an outdoor event, you should always have a backup rain plan. You should have, if you're in a place that has a hurricane or tornadoes, you need to anticipate what that backup is going to be. And also you should be able to create a timeline and have it so detailed that if something was to happen to you on the day of your event, you should then be able to forward that to another coworker or someone should be able to pick up that task. That was one of the things that my boss at DreamWorks taught me. He said, well, of course, we don't want anything to happen to you. We don't want you to get sick, but your timeline should be so detailed that I could pass it on to anyone else in this department they can pick it up and actually have the event run. So your timeline wants to include contact names, what they're doing, load in and load out times, et cetera. But you also wanna make sure that you're not too, too stringent on that timeline, but that it should provide for you how the event should flow from beginning to end. The second skill that I think you should have if you're interested in event management is you need to be a problem solver. You need to be able to solve a problem before it happens, you need to be very quick on your feet. You need to be able to have alternatives. And if something happens on the day of your event, you should be able to pivot very quickly and realize what do I need to do for this event to still happen? I still have my, my Hollywood visions. The shows must still go on. And what does that mean? What do I need to do? Who do I need to call? How can I make this happen? You need to be able to think very quickly on your feet. And if you're in an entry level position, you should be able to go to your boss or the manager and determine this is what I think we should do. Is this what we should do? And then the second thing, um, I'd say the, the third thing you should have if you want to do event planning is you have to have passion for it. There are a lot of people who stress themselves out if they are given the task to coordinate an event. You, you're going to encounter so many people that will say, how can you handle putting an event together that must be so stressful? And I say, it's stressful, but I love it. I absolutely love what I do. And it shows, and yeah, I can have some stressful events. I've had some very stressful events, but I've had some really great events also. Um, so those are the three things I, that you should have if you're interested in event management. Um, you want to also network. Um, if you don't already know how to network, 
you need to start practicing networking. You should be able to go up to someone and possibly have a business card. And I'm talking about you as a, a junior or a senior in, in, at UCSB right now and say what you want. If you've heard the saying, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. If you are interested in event management, you should be able to go to a networking event and say, for example, I'm going to take Rami. Uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correct. Where's Rami? Where's Rami on my screen? Here we go. Rami Hildebrand. Am I pronouncing that right, Romy? It's Romy. Romy, Romy. Okay. Romy, you should be able to go up in, to someone in a networking event and say, hi, my name is Romy. I just graduated from UC Santa Barbara. I, I have an interest in event planning. Is there something like that available in your company or someone that you can put me in touch with? Doesn't have to be long, straight, and to the point. And that person may not know someone, but you never know who knows someone that knows someone that knows someone. And you go out there and you just put yourself out there. And then you wanna make sure you follow up with someone. Informational interviews are also a really good thing. Go on LinkedIn or even use our US, US, I'm not USC, UCSB Alumni Council um, to network with other um, alumni and just ask for, to have an informational interview because they're also going to provide for you some insights on your career path, what you're interested in. And I, any student that reaches out to me on LinkedIn, nine times out of 10, I'm going to respond and I'm going to do an informational interview. But I want to say you will come across some that you will reach out on LinkedIn and you will not hear a word from them and do not be discouraged. They're just not, they're just not the one that wants to provide and instill information in you. So not only am I interested in, in event planning, I'm interested in teaching and I'm interested in empowering the next generation. And it's not a lot of people like that out there. So our network, use our network, use our council um, to be able to do that. Also internships, um, in addition to me being a public relations assistant when I was at the Walt Disney Company, one night I was attending a networking event and I met a woman who owned her own special events and public relations company. And that's, I did exactly what I just instructed you to do. I went up to her and I said, my name is Cynthia Tucker. I work at the Walt Disney Company. I've always had an interest in event planning. Do you have any opportunities for interns? And she said, absolutely I do, but they're not paid. I said, ma'am, I don't want a dime. I just want the experience. I interned with her for three years. So I was working at DreamWorks, or I was working at the Walt Disney Company, actually. I was working at the Walt Disney Company from 8 to 5, and then three days a week, I worked for her from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., three days a week, sometimes on the weekend, for three years, and she paid me $50 total. And she gave me $50 because she felt bad with all the gasoline I was using. And I said, again, I don't want a dime. I just want the experience. Um, so there will be times when you may not get paid for something, but I'm not saying to not be able to pay your bills and cover your expenses, but there will be times when the experience is priceless and far outweighs what you um, could be doing. So those are some tips that I have um, for event planning. Um, at this time, I guess I can open it up with questions. Thank you, Violetta. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that was fantastic. I ho hopefully everyone else found it uh, equally fascinating. I, I mean, I had no experience or background certainly in the world of the, you know, event planning or event management. So uh, I, I think I can decisively say I am not cut out for it personally, but, <laughs> but I, I admire the people who are because uh, the ability to pull off an event and I'm sure the, uh, the success, that feeling of success afterwards is, uh, puts you on cloud nine, right? Uh, but yeah, anyways, don't let me interrupt QA. Uh, I know I've got a couple questions myself, but please, if anyone else wants to jump in. Or feel free to post them in the chat. Hi, I have a question for Ms. Tucker. Um, thank you so much for coming today. Everything was really insightful. I really, uh, I really loved it. Um, one of the questions I had was, for people interested in doing the same thing as you do, do you recommend going to 
grad school and taking a master's program for specifically in event management or should we focus on getting experience right after our undergrad? This, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to preference my comment or my, my response with, this is just my opinion. Event planning, you need to get your hands in it. You need to get your hands dirty. You need to get in, in event planning. Um, there are programs now that are out there for hospitality or event management that you can get advanced degrees. Um, I'm actually looking at one of them to possibly be an instructor for, um, but do you need to have a degree? No. You're going to find um, within the event industry, my boss, for example, at DreamWorks did not have a bachelor's degree. He was the head of the department. So there are some, some skills that will just come natural. I definitely knew I was going to have a bachelor's and I knew I wanted to have a master's degree. Um, but it, it, I would take it if it's something that you just want to add to your, to your list. Um, but when I'm looking at, at someone's resume um, that's looking at a career in event management, I'm not so hard on their degree. I'm looking for their event experience because, again, kind of like Justin, once you do an event, you realize, I don't want anything to do with this. And it's not until you actually put your feet on the ground and actually run an event and run a few events that you realize um, that you like it or not. And another thing that I notice in interviews when I'm interviewing someone is I can see the passion in their eyes. I can see the passion in their voice when they talk about events. And I'm looking for that person that has that passion too. So when you're going into those interviews and you're talking about the love you have, it is okay to be able to say, I absolutely love event planning. It's something I've always enjoyed doing and it's really gonna come through. Through your, um, through your interview. But to answer your question, if you, if you wanna get a certificate, if you wanna do a little bit of additional training, you're welcome to, but you really wanna get the actual work experience. I see, Kirst is it Kirsten, your comment about networking? Yeah, it's Kirsten, but um, Kirsten. yeah, it's, I've always, I think I just like get too nervous and I think it's like a bigger deal than I make it out to be, but I did have a question regarding like soft skills, I guess, because like, I don't really know. I've always been like in high school, I was always the one like for dances and stuff. I put the party buses together and the after parties and like coordinate everyone, but I can't, or I imagine I can't put that on a resume like worked at. You know what I mean? So how is that something I would, you know, like in an interview, obviously I could talk about that, but my hard experience, if you will, like I've interned at a uh, talent management and realized I don't want to manage people. They're too unpredictable, <laughs> but how would you go about, I guess, codifying that on some sort like document application type of stuff? I'd say still put it on there. Um, I interview students. I have 200 students that work um, in my department. I'm looking for what you did in high school. Once you're right. from college, maybe not so much high school, but I'm able to, I want to see it. I want to see that you were the one that coordinated the party bus. And then I'm asking mm -hmm. in the interview, what were the details that you had to do to coordinate the bus? What did you do from beginning to end? And then I'll be able to hear, you know, the passion, the excitement, mm -hmm. and hear some of the challenges that you had with coordinating that party bus. And if you were to do it differently, do it again, what would you do differently? Um, so you can put that on there, um, especially on your resume because of your age. So would you recommend doing that on like, a, like, where would you even think about putting that as like under experience under, you know, like there's usually a spot, but people are like, oh, I'm good at Microsoft office and da, 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 da. You can either just... put it, mm -hmm. you can either put it under experience or you can put it under a leadership development if you did it for an organization or a club that you were a part of. Um, a lot of recruiters, and one of my best friends who's a recruiter, also a UCSB graduate, um, a lot of college recruiters look for leadership development as its own section on the resume. They are wanting to see what did you do within the last maybe four to five years where you had to lead a group. So you were either the president of an organization, a vice president, secretary, a treasurer. They're looking for you to be more than just a member. You need to have actually held a position in an organization. And what's even better 
is if you were the one that handled the events for that organization, now you've got something to talk about in the interview. And definitely- Thank you. I was wondering if there was anything you ever wish you knew before entering the industry. Was there anything that you were just like, it kind of shocked you that when you entered, you're like, oh, I didn't quite expect this. This wasn't part of the job that I thought I was going to be doing and then had to kind of adapt and overcome. Well, one thing you'll learn with event planning is that we, we put our pride aside and we humble ourselves. The most humbling experience I had, I was doing a 2000 person event. And it was, it was an after party for a premiere. And they had hired my company to coordinate it. At the end of the night, what I did not do, and this is something you're gonna learn when you do events, you're going to have those, oh, how could I have forgotten that? But I make sure that I'll never let it happen again. I did not coordinate who was going to handle all of the trash pickup. I was having this event at a museum and I assumed, unfortunately, never do that again. I assumed that the museum staff was going to take the trash out. Why wouldn't they take the trash out? This is a museum that's open like seven days a week. At the end of the night, they asked myself and my assistant, what are you gonna do with all of the trash? This was a 2000 person event with food and beverages. For the next three hours, my assistant and I took our, took our high heels off. We took our jewelry off. We took his least amount of clothes and walked back and forth to the dumpster for three hours. And it was a humbling experience. And again, I told myself I'd never let that happen, but I, I, I still lift tables. I still lift chairs. I will uh, box a linen. I'll adjust curtains. I will uh, do a floral arrangement really quickly. You have to be multitasked within our industry and you have to be able to jump right in and do something. So that's probably one thing I wish someone had told me. You're not just the coordinator. Um, I've had to go into the kitchen and, and kind of tweak a cake that had a little smudge on the icing. I'm not a baker, I'm not a caterer. I've also had an incident where one of my brides was getting married in a Catholic church. If any of you know anything about Catholic um, ceremonies, at one point in the ceremony, the bride also presents flowers to the Virgin Mary. And the florist forgot the flowers for the Virgin Mary. And so I knew that time was coming up in the program. And again, oh, where are the flowers for the Virgin Mary? I went to the, the section, and I'm not Catholic, so if I'm saying this incorrectly, please forgive me. But I went to the part of the sanctuary where there are the candles that you actually say the prayers and maybe you'll leave some flowers. I grabbed every single flower that was still alive on that altar. I took a ribbon off of the program. I tied it around the ribbon and I presented it to my bride. And my bride looks at it like, that's not, because it's supposed to mirror her bouquet but you just go with it. She presented it to the Virgin Mary and you're probably wondering, do you ever tell your clients? I will tell them at the end of the night. I don't wanna take, I don't wanna take anything away from their joy. And sometimes I'll even have a follow-up meeting with them maybe a couple of weeks after when they come back from their honeymoon. But she and I laughed hysterically and she said, Cynthia, I had no idea where that bouquet came from, but being able to problem solve and be quick on your feet. I'll jump in with a question. Okay. Else has, has one. Um, so you know, thinking back to that experience, right, where you know you're you're coming up to graduation, or maybe you're a couple years out, but you're thinking about, okay, how do I get some real world experience and get that first job out of college, right? And and as I'm thinking about event management and, and event planning. Um, it seems like, you know, it, it can often be difficult to break, break through that or, you know, break the ice and get into that industry, right, without, again, leaning into your network or getting some experience, whether it's through, you know, club or on-campus events, maybe, but uh, at least something else that comes to mind, and, and I'm wondering if, if you see value in this, like joining uh, volunteer or uh, nonprofit organizations, where I feel like there's often a greater demand for, for participation and for leadership, for that matter. Uh, to organize events, orchestrate events, and that might be things like, even, I don't know, even, uh, like a beach cleanup. I know we've done that at Hulu, and we have people that organize stuff like that. Uh, 
and they're just small events where they get, you know, group, you know, we've got a couple thousand employees, but they get groups of people together and say, hey, let's go do something for the community around us. And, um, you know, while it doesn't necessarily pay, I, I would think that that's maybe another great way to get that experience and highlight that experience without having to break into the industry necessarily. Absolutely. Absolutely, Justin. Um, you actually reminded me that's something that I normally share with graduating seniors is if for any reason you can't get it or you're not offered a job within event management, but you kind of get to the point where it's just like, I just need a job. I've got some bills to pay my tuition now, my loans are starting to creep up on me. I just need a job. And let's say you get a job in marketing or advertising. Find a nonprofit organization um, within your community that you're passionate about. If you're passionate about animals, if you're passionate about history or history museums, if you're passionate about um, providing services to, to foster youth or something like that, they are always looking for volunteers and they are always hosting some type of event, um, a fundraising event, coordinating an event. And the same thing, what you do, I would give them a call and say, you know what, I'm a graduate of UC Santa Barbara. I have an interest in event planning. I am available to volunteer my services for say five to eight hours a week or kind of let them know how much time that you can dedicate or three to five hours a week. I would love to be a part of your event planning team. Who can I talk to? Um, I'm ready, I'm ready to work. That's a great opportunity for you to get some experience. And then also if you end up again, taking a job that's not in event planning, talk about it in your interview. Every company, when we get back to working, normally has an employee appreciation party. They didn't normally have a holiday party. They may have an end of the year party. I, at, UC, at USC, I am my division's event planner. I don't do events, but one person found out that that was my background. <laughs> Someone said, Cynthia, would you mind coordinating our end of the year holiday party? I said, sure. And here it is five years later. I'm the, I am the coordinator for the Division of Student Affairs for the University of Southern California. They don't pay me to do that. I'm an event, I'm a venue manager, but because they know I have that skill and, um, you know, and I do it, I do it with pride. Yeah. Uh, Cynthia, we actually got another great question in the chat. I, I know it is uh, just a minute before uh, 6.45, but for those of you that have time to stay with us, please do. Um, so the question Christine asked, a uh, great question, I think, again, given sort of the, the world we've been living in the last 12 or so months now, um, but as, as the new normal is starting, starting to take shape, seems like people are opting for a lot of hybrid events, right? Part virtual, part in person, or some, some proportion uh, breakout. But have you ever held uh, any hybrid events like this? Yes, yes. I was thrown into hybrid events because of COVID. I had not had any experience doing a hybrid event prior to. Um, so in addition to coordinating our holiday party, our end of the year celebrations, I'm also the one that coordinates our student recognition awards is what we call it. And this is an opportunity where the Division of Student Affairs recognizes about 250 to 300 students on the university campus um, that have exceeded in community support, academics, et cetera. And so I was brought on to coordinate that event because it happened in one of my largest venues. Bovard Auditorium is a 1200 seat um, auditorium. And so it happens every year. And of course it was a good fit for me to coordinate it. And so I had been working on it in, it's an event that happens in May. I had started working on it around September, October. And this was my third year coordinating this event. So I kind of knew how to do it with my eyes closed. And so everything had been mapped out. I had my timeline of what I was going to get done every single month, just like I did every, every year. And then March 13th hit, and I was on the phone with my co-vice um, chair on that Monday. And I said, how are we going to do the student recognition awards? I said, I think we're going to have to do this virtually. I don't have any experience doing virtual events. And I needed to humble myself to be able to say, I don't have any experience in this, but I do know someone that knows how to do events virtually. So I paired up with my technical director and a few other people and then started learning and attending webinars on how to host a virtual event. 
So on March, I hosted a virtual event on May the 12th, and it was the very first one that I've ever done. And since then, I've done about 15, and I've also done three webinars on how to host for virtual events. So you get the experience, then you teach other people. So yeah, and, and we're gonna continue in hybrid. Um, we talk in the event industry world about going back to face-to-face. -face. We are gonna have face-to-face -face events, but we're still gonna have to have that virtual component and have hybrid events. So being able to have experience in both is really good um, to have. Great, thank, thank you, Cynthia. Uh, a couple more questions have come in, so I'm gonna keep it rolling. Yeah, I'm available, so keep them coming. Uh, so uh, from Fuang, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, but uh, she asked, how does event planning affect your personal life since it's very busy and oftentimes stressful? That's a great question. Um, if you're going to do events, know that it's going to consume a lot of your, your, your life. It's going to consume a lot of your personal time. And so you really need to be able to balance that with any self-care or me time. You need to be able to selfishly say, I need my own time. So what I started to do was every time I would, do, I would have an event, I would treat myself to a manicure, maybe a pedicure the next day, or maybe a massage. And I was then able to just kind of gather my thoughts, show appreciation to myself for doing a really good job, and then move on to the next event. Um, my friends um, had become accustomed to me being able to say, no, they, we have a birthday party um, for, for a Sharon. Can you attend the birthday party? I have an event that day. Um, Saturday, do you, would you like to come camping with us? Sorry, I have a wedding to coordinate. Um, we're doing a Sunday brunch for Lena's birthday. Are you available? Sorry, I have a bar mitzvah that day. For, for probably about 10 years of my life, I said no, but what my friends started to do is they said, tell us when you're available and that's when we'll have the party. So it may not have been actually on Lena's birthday, but Lena said, okay, within two weeks, if you're available on a Friday night, we want you to be a part of our celebration. And that just, this just really touched my heart that my friends would be that considerate to my schedule. And that's how I was able to participate. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a balance, but if you enjoy what you do, it's gonna be okay, but still have a little bit of time for yourself. Great question. Yeah, I think that holds true across many jobs, right? Anything where, where you're under a lot of stress and pressure, uh, being able to step back, take that moment, uh, and hopefully have again a support group around you to, uh, to help you with that. Yeah. Um, Oh boy, so let's see, what else is coming? Uh, uh, our very own Ron Rice has asked to sign up for your next webinar uh, leading <laughs> tutorial. So, absolutely, uh, absolutely. When, when we host it again, I'll, I'll make sure to include you. Just yeah, and that, send me your email. Yeah, and that might be something other students, uh, you know, for, for those of you here tonight, you know, uh, obviously if, if, you know, Cynthia is, is leading uh, some of these tutorials and, and uh, you know, it might be something great for, for you to participate in as well. So. Uh, again, yep. I recommend connecting with you on LinkedIn afterwards. Sure it's a USC Zoom, but as long as you don't tell anyone, I won't tell you. I, I won't say. There you go. That's the spirit. Uh, like I said, I'm a Trojan, but I'm always a Gaucho. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Helena uh, asked, uh, do you often plan more than one event at a time? And if so, how many do you generally juggle? I'm sure there's a giant Gantt chart or something. That Helena, <laughs> when I first started, working at DreamWorks, I would have between six to eight events a week, a week. And when I tell you, you need to be able to multitask and juggle them all at the same time, because not only am I juggling the events that are happening that week, I'm also juggling the events that are happening next week, next month, and within the next two months, or within that year. So you really need to have some, some great time management. And you also need to be able to prioritize. What's important right now this week, of course, are the events that are happening this week and next week. But if I've got an event that's happening in May, it may not really need my attention right now. It needs my attention, especially if something that needs to be signed or a contract or someone that you need to hire. 
but you need to be able to focus and prioritize and say, I need to focus and make sure that this week's event is good. When I had my own company, I was being very honest with my clients. Um, I would have a bride that would hire me a year out before her wedding, and she wanted my attention every, you know, every day, which I understand it's a wedding. But I told her the same respect I'm going to give you the week of your event, a week of your wedding is the same thing I do with my clients. So I just, I will always let you know when I have a wedding coming up and I may not be as accessible, but know that you will get the same attention. And by having an honest conversation like that, my clients understood when I could not reply back to you so quickly, but again, your event is in, ne is in next year. Um, but when your, your wedding was around the corner, you had my undivided attention. And so you do need to be able to juggle a lot. You're not going to, when you're an entry level, they're not going to give you that many. You might get maybe one or two, maybe a month, maybe one or two a week. But as you start doing it, it's like, it's like pedaling on a bike. You'll just start getting a really rhythm. And I kept a lot of paper folders. This was before computers were just kind of starting. Um, so everything is an ele electronic folder. But if you are old school and you like to write things down, I have a journal. I've got two journals. I've got one for my events and then I've got one for my lectures, for my teaching. And I write everything down still. I print everything out. I try to save some trees, um, but I like writing things down. That's how I remember things and that's how. And then I will take a folder with me and a clipboard as well as my timeline. And that's what you'll see me marking off and using on the day of my event. So you may have already answered this by holding up your journals, but um, what do you have any other time management or event management tools? I mean, I, I don't. I coming from the the marketing world, right? I think of like project management tools like uh, Smartsheets or Trello, but I don't know if those apply or if there are similar tools in the event management space. Justin, I'm so old school. <laughs> A good Girl. old Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Good old Excel spreadsheet doesn't, doesn't harm anyone. Good old Outlook calendar. Um, you want, to, what I used to do at the beginning uh, uh, every Monday when I was working at DreamWorks is I would jot down every task that I needed to do that week. And I wrote it down and then I used it as a checklist. And for me to be able to check off was very important because I felt like I was getting something done and I wasn't forgetting something. Yeah. And as I add, as I remembered I needed to do something, I started adding on and adding on. Nowadays, I'd probably do that electronically. I would type it up and then I would probably highlight it. I like the yellow highlight. I like the green highlight, a pink highlight that lets me know that I'm doing um, that task. Um, but that's, that's kind of the management that I use. Um, there are other tools out there, but when I do a timeline, I still do an old, good old Microsoft Word. Good old Microsoft Word is what I use to create my timelines. I create my columns, or I will use Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I, I like it. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the saying, if it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it, right? <laughs> so if it works, it works, and I'm, I, I think that's great. Uh, and and it's, I think it also just highlights that there are simple tools or simple means, right? You don't need I mean, you know, I know companies love to go out and buy uh, very expensive software just to manage a project. And it's like, well, why can't we all just <laughs> write something down or, you know, be accountable, use a, use a Google sheet, I don't know. Um, I, I have another question though, actually, um, softball, a bit of softball here. Uh, what's your favorite or most memorable event that you've ever done? Mm, I would have to say my most memorable event is I did a reality show. Several years ago, I did a reality wedding show and it was called My Best Friend's Wedding. And the premise of that were there were two sisters that were getting married and each sister was required to coordinate the other sister's wedding. And that sister who was getting married that day didn't know anything about it. I mean, they knew it wasn't a surprise, but you don't know where it's going to be, what it's going to look like, what you're wearing, what they're wearing, nothing until the day of the wedding. And so I had seven days to coordinate a wedding from beginning to end. And I did it on camera. And I was working with one sister and one sister was very uh, rhinestones and pearls, uh, you know, very, very elegant candles. Whereas the other sister was more, I just want good old cookout. You know, I want to wear some cow boots. And so that was the conflict 
Um, I was working with the sister that was the cowboy boots for the sister who liked the rhinestones. And I said, well, I like rhinestones. I like lace. I like pearls. You've got the right person. I'll keep you on that track. And so within seven days, we coordinated a wedding from beginning to end. Um, it aired, we, we did it in San Diego. And it was such a wonderful experience to see the joy on her face that uh, truth be told at the end of the taping and once the cameras were off, I went back into the kitchen, found a dark corner and I cried. I cried because I was so overwhelmed that I did it. I did it. I did something that I love to do. It's showing on camera, people are happy. And here I am, just this young girl that was born and raised in South Central Los Angeles to a single mother that exceeded my mother's expectations. And uh, that was probably, that was one of my best, best experiences. Uh, that's incredible. I, I mean, amazing. And having recently been gotten married uh, not too long ago, I, I know how right. much goes into planning a wedding. So to do it all in a week with people you've like just met, I, I can't imagine, but... I guess for anybody who's getting married in the future and needs a day of wedding planner, you are probably the perfect and absolute best person that they could, uh, could ask for. Um, and that, oh, that's thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But let me share, if, if I have the time, I'll share with you one of my most not so pleasant experiences. I want to say it was, a, it was an experience that taught me something. And that's what everything, um, it's got to be able to teach you something. I had a client um, when I was working with the city of Santa Monica. So I wasn't her event planner. I was her venue manager. I was making sure the venue was, was what she, she is paying for. And so during our walkthrough before the event, this was for her son's bat mitzvah. So very special, very important occasion. And she had asked me, um, can you, I just want to remember, I just want to be reminded that I will not have an event that's adjacent to my son's event on the night of the affair. And I said, well, that's, that's not really our policy. We have soundproofing and we have a way that we can keep one guest, other guests and your guests separated, but I'm not sure if there's not going to be another event happening. Let me check with you because I wasn't in the sales department. Sales department books it. And then it comes over to me. And she said, well, that's what they told me in the sales department, that I would not have another event adjacent to mine. And I said, okay, well, you need to just smile and go, okay, ma'am, let, let me see what's going to happen. I went to the sales department and I said, fingers crossed, please don't let this be another event. Turns out there was another event. So there was a sweet 16 and a bar mitzvah side by side. And with both with, with DJs, both with guest counts of about 150 people, both close in age. Um, and so I had to share that information with her. When I tell you she was livid, she, I was not her salesperson. I didn't book the gig. I didn't book the sales with her. Um, but I was the person that now needed to be the face of, of everything she had to say. And she, we, we offered moving to a different date, moving to a different time. She had invitations printed. We were gonna pay for invitations to be reprinted. We were going to have to take um, some responsibility for what that salesperson said to her. And we all said, that's not, that's not normally what we, how we book spaces. So I don't know why she assumed that, but we decided, you know what, let's trust that that's what she's saying is true. She could have interpreted it that way, but what can we do to make sure her event runs smoothly? So I met with her event planner and I told her event planner on the day of your event, I am your assistant. If you need me to do anything, call me. This is my cell phone number. I'm going to give you a walkie talkie, anything that you need. And so throughout the, the process, I was talking with my boss and I said, you know, that this lady is still really upset. She won't move her date. She won't, won't move the time. Can I bring on another assistant to help me? So now this woman has a, wedding, a, a coordinator and two assistants that are helping her to make sure. And when I tell her, when she said, jump, Cynthia, I said, how high and where would you like for me to jump? It was a learning experience. Plus it allowed me to go back into the event planning world. So I didn't mind that at all. Um, but it helped me as a venue manager now, as someone that oversees venue spaces, I make sure that my team 
follow the policies and procedures and things are written down. What we did not have is we did not have a policy that was in writing to say, we, will, we, we cannot guarantee that you won't have someone adjacent to you, but we'll do everything we can to make sure your guests don't, don't mix. And that's what we did. We had one person enter one way, one person exit another way. There was no overlapping, ended up being a wonderful event. Sounds like a really valuable learning experience, I think, as you described, right? Always that silver lining. It's usually in the things that go wrong that you get a valuable learning experience, right? I think that cuts across probably any industry, any job, any career path. Um, I'm sure many of us can relate. Um, but with that, Cynthia, I just want to thank you on behalf of everybody uh, for, for joining us tonight, speaking, sharing a little bit about your journey. Uh, again, I, I think everybody, and including myself, probably found it very insightful and, and absolutely fascinating for, for those of you that are, are interested in the world of event management. Uh, obviously, again, I will recommend uh, connecting with Cynthia on LinkedIn.